This is The Chris Abraham Show. Hey there, this is the Chris Abraham Show, season six, episode uh, 12, I think. It's a beautiful morning. It's going to be almost 80 degrees today on uh, November 9th. I have so much work. Oh my God. This is the single, I had a, (laughs) someone scheduled a call for 745. Someone scheduled a call for 845, wanted to do like he gave me 20 minutes to get onto a call to do half an hour of consulting. Um, I have like eight clients right now. I have to actually set up my uh, Todoist app to kind of juggle all of these guys. I'm not used to juggling so many clients at once. Need to make sure that I don't drop them because clients are glass balls. They're not rubber balls especially in a world of, uh, of Upwork where you are uh, judged by the five stars. And uh, I do not want to mess with my reputation. So I need to hustle so hard today. It's Thursday and tomorrow, Friday and Saturday and Sunday. I am going to have fancy tapas dinner at that fancy uh, restaurateur who... Uh, does all that uh, Mexican, Spanish, Latin American food. Andre, Andre something. And uh, with my lovely friend Mira uh, Edelman. And that's nice. She's going to treat me to a nice dinner. And I will be grateful and happy and charming and fun. She's a lovely person. She's one of the best. And she puts up with me, which is... uh, an amazing reflection of her character. So I don't know what to say. Like yesterday's podcast was a, uh, a feels like a Chris Abraham suicide bomb, but, uh, nobody listens. So I'm not going to have to have much accountability for it. Um, so today is all day in, uh, in the Arlington public library tomorrow. If I have some time, I'm going to go to TJ Community Center and I'm going to sign up and I'm going to become one of the old guys who goes to the TJ Community Center gym and that will be my every day. I will start schlepping a bag of gym stuff and maybe that will require me to upgrade to my GORUCK GR3 which is a ginormous bag Um, but we'll see. I really don't want to have to upgrade to a GR2 34 liter because it's so bulky. But whatever, I'll need to figure it out. If I'm going to the gym, I will use the space that I allocate to my DIY TRX straps to that. Maybe there's plenty of room to do it all. Since I am a a low-intensity athlete, I'm hoping that even if I do weights, uh, even heavy weights, I will not uh, schwitz like a pig. And as a result, I will be able to work out in the morning and not necessarily have to shower and all that other stuff. Although it might behoove me to get up, get out before I shower in the morning and then make the shower at the community center if they have it, make that part of my strategy, you know, like I used to do when I used to ride bikes uh, to work at Edelman and uh, P&I, being, sorry, uh, NMS before that and uh, would arrive on my, my, my bicyclette. And then work out and shower, change, and all that fun stuff. So, on that note, um, the only thing that I noticed in the last 24 hours was the GOP debate. And I didn't watch it, and I haven't heard it yet. But uh, Dave Quick did send me the excerpt where Vivek Ramaswamy was going off on how blue the red debates are, how... All the interviewers are lefties, how the channel's lefty, how the channel, the um, 
the vibe, the questions, the accusations, everything's lefty. And while I do not consider myself lefty or righty, what Vivek said, which was really good, was that these uh, debates should be moderated by people like Joe Rogan and, I guess, you know, Steven Crowder and uh, Tucker Carlson and uh, that kind of fella. Even, you know, Tulsi Gabbard would be a better uh, moderator than uh, Lester Holt. Is that his name? And so I thought that was a real zing. And I did share on social media because even freaking Glenn Beck commented on it. And Glenn Beck is a little bit more establishment than, than some of them. I pop into channel 111 on Sirius XM to listen at 9 o'clock to see what he's on about. And even he's calling Nikki Haley a, uh, a warmonger. I like to use war pig, but instead today, I decided to call her a warmongress because I searched on, uh, on Wikipedia and there are fish mongers and there are fish mongresses. So Nikki Haley is officially a fish mongress. Goddess bless her. She's the worst. And you know, I mean, Hillary Clinton proved to us that you can have uh, establishment warmonger war pigs with uh, Dos Equis chromosomes. You can have women who, has, who are as mean-spirited and cruel as the biggest bald uh, uh, tyrant in the entire world. So um, we've seen that in every single uh, State Department position. We've seen that with Hillary. We've seen that with, with Condoleezza Rice. Uh, we've seen that with, um, with so many people. There is no lack of willingness to fight wars. I mean, the person I hate the most in the world is a complete warmonger war pig. And the only reason she feels like she can remain an Irish Catholic is because she feels like she only fights rice, righteous wars. And by righteous wars, I mean she believes that all of her war pigginess, all of her warmongerousness is in the name of protecting women and girls. And as we know, protecting women and girls isn't good enough anymore. It's all about uh, protecting babies now. So, hey, how's it going? So, now is the war against dead babies. Seems like not a good time to start telling dead baby jokes on my podcast. So I'll let you go to Google and search for dead baby jokes. There's at least a thousand dead baby jokes if you want to enjoy them. Like, for example, I'll just give you one that's on the top of my head. And it's uh, really, by definition, is sort of the epitome of all that is dead baby jokes. So how can you tell? How can you sort the dead babies from the live babies from a pile of from a giant pile of babies how do you sort the dead babies from the live babies if you have a giant pile of babies i think the joke is with a pitchfork and you can tell the live babies because they're the ones that wiggle on your pitchfork i don't know that required more timing more telling more tightness and I should have read the joke off of the page, but it's, it's the kind of joke where you kill live babies in order to figure out if they're live babies kind of joke. So as you all know, I'm a heartless bastard who basically assumes that if, if, a, uh, if a news uh, announcer starts talking about dead babies or about putting uh, um, blue pills into the MREs of the enemy's supply, or um, it talks about, you know, raping and beheading. If there's talks about Viagra, if there's talks about beheading, if there's talks about raping, or if there's talks about dead babies, I don't believe what I'm being told. The moment you say um, dead babies are being raped and beheaded, by fighters who are on Viagra, I don't even know if there's a war happening. I don't even know if war exists. And I just assume I'm in a simulation where the 
uh, programmers are getting extremely lazy and they just want to bait me into not believing them. So uh, recently on October 7th, uh, it's all been about uh, beheaded, dead, raped babies who were raped by people who are on Viagra so as to rape better the babies. Oh, and then they added about putting babies, they added about putting babies into ovens and like ovens in houses, like, like roasting a chicken. And they've showed 40 beheaded babies and then a bunch of burnt beheaded babies. And I assume those dead babies were raped too. So I don't know. I assume everything the enemy does, we do as well. So ironically, you never hear about our troops ever raping dead beheaded babies with Viagra dicks. You never hear that because we're the good guys and good guys follow uh, moral and ethical concerns. They rigorously follow the Geneva Convention. They hold their fire. They never fire into crowds. They never ever, heaven forbid, kill men who aren't literally soldiers. They never ever kill babies, heaven forbid. Babies are only to be killed in utero. They never kill or rape women or girls or boys. And they totally never rape goats. Because, like, the biggest joke right now is low-key, if, if you missed it, every mock of the Muslim people, the Islamic people, every joke, whether you admit it or not, is that Muslim man with a goat. So every joke is calling them goat fuckers. So, of course, Americans are professional soldiers who would never rape, behead, burn, ache, defile, kill babies or mommies or girls or, or anybody who's not uh, in body armor with a patch on their shoulder that says, I'm an army man, because anything else is a war crime. Everything else is a war crime. And Americans do not participate in war crimes. Americans are the good guys. We, uh, we bleed red, white, and blue. We have esprit de corps. We have muzzle discipline, trigger discipline, fire discipline. We always prefer the kind and Geneva Convention appropriate behavior in any situation. And if you believe anything else, then you are uh, a monster. You are, you are Vladimir Putin. Anything besides that, because obviously Russians, you know what Russians do? They have Viagra in their MREs. Uh, they're encouraged to rape beheaded dead babies. Um, and if there aren't any beheaded dead babies available, they will rape and probably kill, behead, and then burn your uh, wives and daughters, your mothers, your sisters, your children, because that's just what Russians do. Uh, and depending on what side of, of the uh, October 7th event you are, um, it's either, uh, Sorry. either Hamas, Palestines, or Israelis have done that, will do that, are doing that to your babies, your wives, your daughters, your boys, your girls, your children, your grandparents, and everybody in all hospitals and schools. So that's terrible. Americans would never do that, though, because Americans are the good guys. And on that note, I don't know what to say next. I think I'm out of juice. We'll see if anybody's listening, because this might be the most offensive episode of the Chris Abraham show I've ever done. That being Chris. Oh, I have something else to talk about before I stop, because I'm almost at the 7-Eleven where I want to go get something to drink while I'm at the library. Um, I discovered that the best way to get into health is to just is just to be active, right? Like instead of focusing on any particular athletic endeavor, I just uh, I just walk everywhere, keep on walking, carry a moderately heavy bag, only eat protein and fats, avoid carbs to the best of my ability, try to keep my intake under 2,500 calories, try to keep my intake under 2,000 calories, 
try to keep my intake under 1500 calories, try to fast for 20 hours, try to fast for 18 hours, try to fast for 16 hours, try to fast for 13 hours, and then repeat. Oh, drink lots of water, lots of water. Make sure you have potassium, magnesium, and sodium to compensate for the calories you're not eating. Um, I do intersperse as much in my to avocado as I can, even though there's carbs in that. My cardiologist likes when I eat avocados and likes when I eat olives and wants me to eat more courgettes. Uh, I mean, zucchini and yellow squash. And then just do that every day for the rest of your life. And if you intersperse like bicycling and a little bit of jogging and some time at the gym, but if you get like 10, 11, 12, 13, 14,000 steps a day, even if it's over like 7,500, 7,000 steps a day, you're good. On that note, this was the Chris Abraham Show, season six, episode 12. I don't know. My name's Chris Abraham. I hope you are completely and utterly offended by everything I say. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>